We begin this hour on Capitol Hill with the fight over who will be the next House Speaker or if there will be a next House Speaker. That's right. We expect a vote to begin in just moments. And joining us to discuss all of it is our Capitol Hill correspondent, Ali Vitale, along with NBC News political correspondent Steve Kornacki, Michael Steele, former Republican National Committee chair, who's now an MSNBC political analyst, and former Ohio governor, now MSNBC political analyst. John Kasich, and former Maryland Congresswoman Donna Edwards, also an MSNBC political analyst. We've got a, a great group of people to dissect every angle of this vote. Absolutely. And let's start with you, Ali. What is it that is happening right now? And is there any expectation that things are going to look any different today than they did yesterday? No. <laughs> Quite frankly, Jose, you, as always, ask the right question, which is not if not who the speaker will be, but if there will even be a speaker today. Our understanding going into this vote, and we're seeing members start going to the floor, going up the stairs behind me and all the other entrances into this building, I haven't spoken to anyone who is saying, ally or not of Jim Jordan, that he has the votes to become speaker today. Instead, Jordan is grappling with a few different cross currents, specifically the idea that members are so frustrated and fatigued that they aren't making progress, that there are some who are considering empowering the speaker pro tempore, Patrick McHenry, for a set period of time just so that they can get with the business of doing Congress and running the government. For Jordan, he thinks that it's a question of, do you want to do that or do you want to elect me as speaker? Listen to what he said just in the last few minutes. The fundamental question today is, are we going to elect a Republican speaker or are we going to have coalition government where Democrats are involved in selecting the speaker? And I just met with our leadership and said, put both questions to the body today. Let's find out. We've been at this for two weeks now. Let's find let's get an answer. We may get the opportunity to find out, Jose, because the way that this is going to go is at 11 o'clock, we're going to see them, of course, gavel in. Members are on the floor. They're going to do the, pl the, pr the pledge, a prayer. They're going to do a quorum call. And then we'll see them move on at around 1130 or so to the actual vote on electing a speaker. Once that is over, our understanding is there could be some push to actually vote on empowering Speaker Pro Tempore Patrick McHenry. And the words that Jordan uses here are really important because what he is affecting effectively saying to other Republicans is you can either exercise our majority power as Republicans, however slim that majority may be, or you can band together with Democrats. And we know that bipartisanship is a dirty word here to the rank and file of the Republican conference. Don't forget how we got in this position in the first place. It's because McCarthy, with the aid of Democrats, kept the government open not but three weeks ago. So Jordan is signaling to the rest of his conference. You can either be a Republican or you can do a coalition government. He thinks that might be enough to push people back into his camp, but we might get to see both scenarios play out today.